Hi guys, what's up? My name is Riley and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a licensed cosmetologist in the state of California. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, I'm gonna leave it right down here. You can find me there. It is my favorite place to be. I absolutely love Instagram, so check me out. So the other day on my Instagram story, I did a Q&A and I don't think I've ever gotten so many questions about being an assistant. This video is going to be perfect for you if you have been or are interested in becoming an assistant and steps you can and should should take to land your dream job. If you're familiar to my channel, you know that I totally preach about being an assistant, why I think everybody should be an assistant, and so on and so on. So it's very understandable why people have questions about it. So today I'm gonna be doing a video how to find an assistant job for you. Now, like I said, I totally recommend that everybody should be an assistant for at least one year. I know that I would not be where I am today if I was never an assistant. I would not have the same drive that I do. Being an assistant really set me up for the career I have today. I am the reason that I have the career I do today. It is not because the person I assisted for gave that to me or handed it to me, but she did teach me a lot about the stuff that I did want, the stuff that I didn't want, how I wanted to treat my clients, what kind of hair I wanted to do. I also just learned a lot about myself, what kind of business I want to run, how I want to treat people, how I want people to treat me, all sorts of things just from being an assistant. So I kind of wanted to share my background and my experience being an assistant, and then we'll get into tips on how to find your assistant job. So I graduated high school in June of 2018 and started cosmetology four days later. Now people always ask me how I'm so young. That is because I started cosmetology school four days after my high school graduation. I was not messing around. I knew this was what I wanted to do. So I started cosmetology school June of 2018. I graduated May of 2019 and I began my assistant job July of 2019. So one month after my graduation. I I became a part-time booth renter in August of 2019 and I was an assistant for the other days that I did not accept my own clients. And I transitioned into full-time booth renter March of 2020 and I actually decided to switch salons when I did that. In May 2020, I was fully booked six weeks out. Now, if I could go back, I would assist for longer and I would also just do more research. When I was in beauty school, I always knew I wanted to be an assistant and I think I was the only person in my school who would openly say, I want to be an assistant after this. All throughout school, I was a sponge. I wanted to learn anything and everything that anyone was going to teach me. I was constantly looking up YouTube videos and then going to practice those on my doll head. Any information that someone could give me, I was taking it and I was applying that on my doll head. I feel like I kind of got the label of like a tryhard because I took my education really seriously. I just knew I had to put my ego aside. I had to admit that I really wasn't very good at doing hair. I didn't know anything and I wasn't where I wanted to be. I knew if I kept going on that track, I was never going to reach my goals that I wanted to reach in my career. So I feel like a lot of people like the idea of being an assistant, but just have no idea where to start. So there are three key points to finding your dream assistant job. The first thing you need to do is do your research on what an assisting job is. What is your why? This one is so important and something I wish someone was there to help me with or guide me through, but honestly, I didn't know any anybody. I didn't have a mentor at that time. And to be honest, while I was in school, I barely even knew what being an assistant was or what it entailed. I just knew that I did not know enough to be on my own and I needed somebody to mentor me. Start that process in beauty school. I feel like a lot of times people wait until they're out of beauty school. By the time they actually land a job, they're a year post-grad. And at that time, you're kind of falling out of it and you're probably questioning whether you really even want to do hair anymore at all. You should be researching what an assistant is, what kind of an experience you're looking for. Do you want to be a salon assistant or do you want to be a stylist assistant? A salon assistant is going to be where the salon hires you as a whole. So you are getting paid from the salon owner, not an individual staff. List. You also aren't necessarily shadowing one specific person. You're probably doing more tasks like booking, front desk, sweeping, cleaning, stuff like that. A stylist assistant is going to be when one specific person in the salon hires you. You aren't in charge or required to help anybody else except for the person who hired you. That is what I did personally because I felt like it was going to be what I was looking for. You should research what that process is like. What does it look like to be an assistant? Are assistants even popular in your area? Do people are 
around you have assistants? Are people looking for an assistant? I could not find anyone in my area that had an assistant, but most of the time, if you just reach out and ask if someone is looking for an assistant, they probably will at least meet with you, take you up on the offer, think about it. So even if you don't see that someone has an assistant, it's always cool to kind of reach out and ask if they would be interested in one. The reason you need to do this research is to make sure this is the route for you. Not everyone is made to be an assistant, although I recommend it. It is not a one size fits all opportunity. So just making sure this is the right route for you as you graduate cosmetology school. So the second thing you need to do is establish your goals. Being an assistant is a limited time thing. It's not something you're gonna do for the rest of your career. It's not something you're gonna do for the rest of your life. So you need to set goals that you wanna hit and accomplish for that short period of time. You need to be honest with yourself. You do not have to to sell yourself. Everybody knows that you graduate school knowing nothing, so you don't need to feel like you are going to outsmart anyone, outprove anybody. Like I said, nobody knows anything. If you're stuck in your ways, it actually might be harder for you to be hired. Your stylists want to hire someone that is willing to learn, willing to try things differently, or try something new. Like I said, if you're stuck in your ways, it's going to be really hard to be teachable, and that is the number one thing that you have to be as an assistant. It's really important to acknowledge what are you you least comfortable in? What is something you want to learn the most? What do you want to get out of the experience as a whole? It is so important to set these goals because you want to make sure that your goals are going to line up with your potential boss. At the end of the day, if you want to be a blotting specialist and they only do vivid colors, your goals don't necessarily match up and you're just not going to be the right fit for each other. If they want you to sweep the ground for a year before actually ever touching hair, you have to establish if that's going to be the right path for you. Another reason why it's important to have these goals is so when you do get a job and when you do get hired, you can look back on the goals every few weeks and reevaluate whether you're actually hitting them, whether you're actually learning what you want to learn or getting where you think you're going to want to be when this program is over. If you're not hitting your goals that you guys had talked about or discussed, then maybe this isn't the right fit for you and someone else would be a better match. Now, the third thing you need to do is find the right fit for you. Now this is so much easier said than done and honestly this is probably the hardest part. When we get out of school we are desperate. We're so desperate and even me I was so desperate out of school I just wanted anybody and everybody to teach me how to do hair but if you're gonna be spending all day all month all year with this person you need to make sure that they are the right fit for you. So when I was in school I was researching blonding specialists in my area. I knew that I wanted a blonde client and tell. I knew that I wanted to do blonding, extensions. All of that was my dream and my goal. At the time, I actually thought I was going to be moving. So I was researching for that specific area and I found someone I really admired. So I actually decided to book a haircut with her and I actually went and got my haircut by her. When I met her, she was so nice. Literally, I absolutely loved her. So I kept in touch with her and a couple months later, I asked if her assistant was looking to maybe move on anytime soon. She said, that she definitely was, but it didn't really fit up with my timeline that much. It wasn't a for sure thing. I obviously didn't want to kick that assistant out and it didn't seem like it was going to be the right fit. And honestly, I didn't end up moving anyway. So everything works out for a reason. I still absolutely love that stylist. She actually does my hair now and we are really good friends. So regardless of the fact that she cut my hair and we didn't work out as business partners, I'm so glad I met her because she's seriously one of the nicest, most supportive hair stylist. I've ever met, but I would totally recommend booking a haircut, a blowout, a toner, something super simple. Go in, meet them in a setting that's not an interview. You should ask other hairstylists around the community, friends you have that get their hair done by them, maybe people at your beauty school, mentors you have, if they are reputable, are reliable, they are nice. Now, obviously everybody has their own opinion and I will say that in this beauty industry, people are a little bit tough and I feel like everyone has an opinion about everybody. So take it with a grain of salt because at the end of the day you are attaching your name to theirs. If they don't have a very good reputation that kind of falls back on you. So I hope these tips helped you guys. I have so many other videos I could do about being an assistant so if you guys have any specific questions or want to see anything very specific go ahead and leave that down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram right down here and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.